Have you ever found yourself lost in the labyrinth of Photoshop, drowning in a sea of tools and settings without a compass in sight? Well, you're not alone. Hello, my name is Rickard, and today I'm here to share a game-changing approach to mastering Photoshop that doesn't involve memorizing every button or menu. Did you know that 90% of people who struggle with Photoshop get stuck focusing on the wrong thing? Maybe you just downloaded it and were overwhelmed by all the buttons, panels, and settings. It's like coming into an airplane cockpit for the first time, only to realize you're the pilot and you've never even flown a kite. Or maybe you've been using it for a while, but your images still don't have that wow factor that you see in online galleries. The truth is, it's not about memorizing every setting. It's about a different kind of skill, your artistic and creative skill. If you wanted to cook awesome food and were struggling, reading the user manual to the oven will not make a significant difference to the taste of your food. Instead, learning tried and true recipes will and with each recipe, you'll learn a little bit more about your kitchen equipment. Do you want to know my biggest secret when it comes to creating beautiful digital art, even if you don't know every Photoshop setting inside and out? In the last two videos, we talked about how focusing too much on technicalities hinders creativity, and how creativity is a muscle that you can develop. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. In both, I mentioned my creative Photoshop learning method, or just creative learning method. And that's what I want to dive further into in this video. The traditional way of learning Photoshop by diving into each tool, each blending mode, each adjustment layer, doesn't work for most people. They tend to get lost in the technical aspects of Photoshop, trying to learn every setting and getting obsessively attached to tools that simply don't serve their creativity or that they'll hardly ever use. There's a belief that if they just learn that one other tool or just understand the channel mixer, they'll finally be a Photoshop master. If you just learn the right grind setting on your pepper shaker, you will turn into Gordon Ramsay. Sure, and if you yell loud enough at your microwave, it'll cook a gourmet meal. The kitchen and Photoshop, unfortunately, aren't quite that simple. So what is the creative Photoshop learning method? Let me take you back to when I first started as a graphic designer. This was 20 years ago. The Photoshop learning options back then were pretty bleak. There was no YouTube, just a user's manual about that thick that looked like it could survive a nuclear winter and was about as fun to read. And then there was a book called Sam's Teach Yourself Photoshop in 24 Hours, which was 24 one-hour lessons on every tool, filter, and effect in Photoshop. These were basically the user manual to the oven. I hadn't gone to art school or done any training in design, so I was teaching myself while holding a full-time job. I'd study the books in the evening, and then on weekends when I had access to Photoshop, I'd try to apply what I learned and every ingredient of every recipe before cooking my first dish, including the ones they hadn't even invented yet. Then three things happened, one after another, that entirely changed my learning methodology and my approach to Photoshop. The first turning point was when I started sharing an office with a Photoshop guru who didn't mind me looking over his shoulder and asking him questions as he worked. Watching him, not just the tools he used, but his approach was eye-opening. In a few hours, I learned more than weeks with manuals. Observing a master in action was like a crash course in creative problem solving. Now, a few weeks into my first design job, I needed a glowing window for a radiation book cover. My idea was I would have the radiation symbol as a window 
and there would be this green radiating light coming out of it. And I just couldn't get it to look right. So I turned to a friend who was a visual effects score and he sat me down and within a few minutes, he whipped up a killer glowing lightsaber in Photoshop. I watched him use Gaussian blur, layering, screen blending mode, and hue saturation. And it was like a live Photoshop recipe in action, one that I could directly use in my own project. And it taught me the context of all of those tools, which all the books never did. Now, the final turning point was discovering Craig Mullins. He's a digital artist. He actually started with MS Paint and was one of the pioneers of digital painting inside of Photoshop. If you haven't checked out his work, do yourself a favor and go to goodbrush.com. He's an absolute master. But before YouTube was a thing, Mullins shared a video tutorial on his website. And to this day, it's one of the most influential tutorials I've watched. It consisted of just four steps. He did a quick sketch, and then he did a gradient set to multiply, which basically established the lighting for a scene. And then he did a highlights and a shadows layer. Now there have been 21 versions of Photoshop since then, but this is still the best recipe I've seen for digital painting inside of Photoshop. Now, speaking of recipes, here's the secret. I wasn't learning Photoshop. I was learning recipes for creative results and from people who are damn good cooks. Let's be honest, even a bad cook can follow a good recipe. And I was no Julia Child when I started in Photoshop. So what does this mean for those trying to learn Photoshop? Well, first, stop trying to learn Photoshop. It's just a tool. I've seen thousands of composites, photos, and digital images created by aspiring artists. And I can tell you with a lot of certainty that Photoshopping is hardly ever the problem. Usually the problem is in composition, atmosphere, color, realistic shadows, how light interacts in the scene, depth, perspective, blending of images, and yes, Photoshop skills are needed. But if you focus on Photoshopping, you're missing the forest for the trees. Instead, your better approach is to seek out tutorials that create the types of images that you want to create, and then follow them step by step to get that result. Now, even if it covers tools or settings you already know, what you're learning is creative recipes for the visual effects or visual results that you want. I know this sounds simple, but believe me, if you fully understand it, it will turn around your learning approach to Photoshop if you're struggling. Now, in my upcoming Nuclear Academy 2.0, which launches on Friday, April the 26th, I'll be sharing the creative recipes I've learned over the past 20 years as a photographer, cover designer, packaging designer, web designer, and creative director, having worked with some of the best designers and digital artists in the world, and all of it with the creative learning method. Now, I open registration to the Academy only a few times a year, and to provide the personal support to each to see to each member's success, we are limiting the number of people who can register. So if you're interested, I've included a link in the description of this video where you can sign up to our wait list. Everyone on the wait list will get a bit early access one day ahead um, of when we're opening it to the general public. And you'll also get some exclusive benefits as well as some videos leading up to the release. So go ahead and get on that wait list if you haven't done it yet. In the next video, I'll share with you my Photoshop acceleration blueprint. These are basically the most important creative recipes that will serve you in your creative pursuits, whether you are a photographer, retoucher, graphic designer, or a digital painter. It's a blueprint you can follow to implement the creative Photoshop learning method and bring your imagination to life. 
regardless of whether you join the academy or not, and regardless of your current skill level in Photoshop. All right, that's it for this video. I will see you next time.